better. There you go. <laughs> okay. So um, the first thing that I want to do is um, I want to show you how to access the new features. So I'm just going to turn on my, uh, my I have a cursor um, app here that'll just make it a little bit easier for you guys to see exactly where I am clicking. Okay. So here, maybe a little feedback here. All right, so here we go. Um, what you'll notice is that there's this new icon that is was available. Um, you might have seen it rolled out in the past week. At first, it looked like a puzzle piece, and then they changed it into the trio of the, the triangle, the square, and the circle. But that's where we're going to go to access some of these new tools. So you may or may not see these. Um, I think you should see them in your um, Google Meets, but the way... Google has been rolling it out is, um, and because we've been watching across the country to see when individuals had access to their, I'm just going to uh, see if we can mute that real quick. Sorry, Pete, just going to mute real quick. I'm getting a little feedback. Okay. So um, one of the one of the things that Google's doing is they're they've kind of done this slow rollout for anybody who had um, any district who purchased the education enterprise license, which we did, um, and so they slowly roll it out. So we saw that you know one day. Um, Corey had the controls, but I didn't. And then the next day, Tyler had them. So they're rolling out slowly. If you don't see it, you can let me know. You can drop it in the chat at some point. But um, I'm going to try to show you how to use these things. We're going to play around with it, have some fun today. And um, then I'll be able to answer any questions that you have. So once again, we can access the, um, the tools either up here or by opening up the list of, of participants and then choosing that same icon. So I'm gonna click on that right now. And first let's go into uh, the breakout room. So I wanna click on that and then show you what your options are. Okay, can you guys all see my screen okay? We're good, okay. So right now, it defaulted to a, a number of rooms. So they gave me seven just due to the number of people that we have on this on this call. So you tried to split it up evenly to different breakout rooms of about four people per room. OK, now, depending on how many students you have in your class, it's automatically going to give you maybe two or three breakout rooms and try to divide everyone evenly but you have the autonomy to choose how many rooms you actually want to have. So by either type, racing and typing in or just clicking the up or down arrow, you'll see that everyone that is in the, the, the meet is um, going to be distributed among those breakout rooms. So you can make the breakouts as small or as large as you need. Now, they, it defaults to bring you into to bring your participants into one of several different breakout rooms, but you can also move them around. So let's say, for example, Ashley wanted Ashley to be in breakout two. All I have to do is take her and move her down to the to one of the other groups. Okay, so I can take Sean and move her up to breakout one. So it's just a simple drag and drop for you to be able to move your students around. OK, you also have the ability, if you wanted to, uh, to change the titles within this. So it's just breakout one, two, three and so on, and, uh, you know, for however many you have. Um, but you can also call this like group A or group one. Um, Melissa, you muted yourself. Sorry. <laughs> that is, thank you, Sharon. So that is one thing that I, that I forgot as we were testing it. So, and that's something that I want you guys to be mindful of. Um, 
every time we select the breakout, that automatically mutes us. So you want to unmute yourself every time you select that. Same thing as, and we're going to practice this, as the, the host going in and out of different breakout rooms, it's going to mute you. So you want to, you know, always check that. And um, this is very new to me too. So uh, I appreciate you guys sticking with me. So I don't know how much you may have heard of any of that, um, but I'm just going to back up and recap just in case you have the ability to change the number of rooms and it's automatically going to put individuals into rooms with you. Um, it's going to split them evenly among the, the number of breakout rooms you want. Um, I would suggest from the very beginning doing um, not too many breakouts uh, just to kind of get used to it a little bit because the less you have to, um, to go into or transition from one breakout room to another just until you get used to it, I think it would be um, better, it would be easier to manage. So just like anything else, as we get used to it, we want to start slow and and um, and simple, and then you can, you know, work up from there. So what you'll notice is that there's always this main room and then I have, um, as people enter in, they may enter, in, they're going to enter into the main room. And then we can group everyone into these other breakouts. So I started to say before that you can drag people from the main room into one of these other group, on, one to the, into one of the other rooms. So I'm just going to add some of these people here. Um, but you can also move from one breakout to another. And if it makes it easier for you, you can also rename the, the breakouts. So I was saying before that even though there's a space in between the default breakout, one, two, three, and so on, it doesn't allow you to type in a space. So just know that if it's group one, it's going to be, um, it's going to be, you know, as if it's one word. Okay. So here you can also see the number of individuals that are assigned to each breakout room. And we can also eliminate a breakout room if we wanted to by closing out the X or just simply changing the number of rooms that we have. So I'm just going to clear this for now. So let's say I decided to put everybody into breakout rooms, um, but for whatever reason, I want to start over from scratch. All I have to do is click clear. And now everybody's back in the main room again. Okay, so we're all still in the same main room now because I never selected create in the breakouts. One of the reasons why I, I cleared it because I would start over again is because I want to show you something else. So as soon as I then go in to determine the number of rooms that I want. And so for right now, I think I want to do like let's do um, three breakout rooms to kind of keep it nice and simple. Okay, so it's given us about 10 people per, per room. And um, I can decide who I wanted to go into those rooms and drag and drop. But I really like this feature of just shuffling everyone because then that is um, going to automatically put individuals into different groups. And then if you needed to change it, you can based on students that are doing presentations together or whatever it may be. So let me go clear this again. And let me show you the shuffle feature. So I'm just gonna click on shuffle. And then here we go, we have three different groups, uh, three different breakout groups. And just for consistency, I'm going to um, just rename each of these. And I think that's a good tip for everyone to rename them based on how you'll remember them um, so that it's, it's not so generic as you're starting out. So now I'm going to select create. Once I select create, that's going to split you into the three groups, this three breakout rooms that I've created. Now, before I do that, I want you I want to get, again say that it's going to mute upon arrival, okay, by breaking into those groups. But also, I as the host or the, the teacher with the, the, the host controls, I have the ability to go into any breakout room that I choose. While you're in those rooms together, though, I'm not seeing every single breakout group and discussion. 
I'm only in the one that I select at that time. So basically what I'm saying is that I have three breakout groups, but I can only be in one of them at any given time. If I want to bring everybody back together, then I'll select to bring everybody back into the main room. And I'll show you what those controls look like as I jump in and out of your breakout sessions. The other thing that I want to bring up before we go into the breakouts is that I did test it on another device. So I, I asked myself, well, if I can't be in more than one breakout group at a time on my one computer, could I then use another computer to be able to be in a secondary breakout group? And the answer to that is no, because you're still logged in with the same account. So even if I had my computer over here that was going to be logged into um, breakout gr group one, and this was going to be breakout group two, it's still, both computers are going to ask me to be in that that one breakout room, okay? Because it's based on your account. Now, that being said, for those of you that have co-teachers, um, you can definitely, you know, be in different breakout groups at, at, at any given time. But I want you to think about it this way. Um, you know, when we're in our classroom and we're working with our small groups, you know, we can't see everything. You know, we're not, if we're in a deep discussion with, with a small group, we are not in a deep discussion with that other small group. So that's okay. Based on the, you know, based on the expectations that we've set and, um, you know, the, the rapport that we've built with students, um, giving them tasks ahead of time before splitting them into those groups and making sure that they have an, an understanding of what's expected of them when they do go into those breakout groups will help keep your, um, your, your classroom environment on, um, you know, on point and on focus. Okay, so that being said, let me just make sure here, I'm going to take a couple other, okay, just add everybody in. And now I'm going to click create. When you go into your breakout groups, just talk amongst yourselves, uh, talk, uh, talk about the things that you've noticed, maybe how you might use this in your classroom. I'm going to jump in and out of the breakout groups for a couple of minutes each probably give about two minutes each, and then we'll all circle back and come back together as a as an entire group, okay? Here we go, we're ready to get into our breakout group. So I'm going to select create.
right? So your names are, um, your names uh, are, you're and not in the group. Is, She's got us. Hi guys, this is working. And well, then we're yeah, but just put us back into our uh, group uh, three. So, so Gil, we're were you ever placed in a group initially? Uh, I was in group two. Okay, are you able to go back into that? Do you see? Yeah, I've joined. I've gone back and forth a couple of times. Okay. Yeah, you just have to at the top. It says join. You just rejoins it. Mm. But what's the purpose of being back in this main? Do you think maybe it's like people were done, then you go back and join? Or I, as a main, as a teacher, don't jump into any of the rooms, maybe, and I stay in the main room. You know? You left. I'm going to join our group again. Me too. I won't be able to see it because I'm not in group three. No, but does, it, does my hand raise in group three go to the main group? The main group. No. Are you in the main? So now I'm in the main group right now. Okay. Yeah. No, I think it's just specific to that group.
Okay, we have everyone back with us. Um, we do have, um, we did have some questions that came up in each group that I'd like to kind of address just before we move, uh, we move forward. So one of the things that you'll notice now is that our, I'm gonna present to you, if you're looking at the number of participants, it's increasing, it, it increased every couple of seconds as you know we started to get everybody back into that main room. So it depends on how quickly everyone clicks on those notifications to then join the main room or to join the breakout rooms. So you might want to, as you move, navigate in and out of each breakout room, just give it a second for everybody to be able to um, join you again. Okay, so a couple of the questions that we did, um, we, we did get is if students are in a, um, if students are in a meet and they're in a breakout room, but they're also in the same classroom together, uh, do they need to mute themselves? Will there be feedback? The answer is yes. So it's definitely going to, you're going, their students will have feedback if they're speaking in the same physical space and also online as well. So same rules apply, mute, unmute when you're speaking or not. Um, another question that came up was, um, what do we do if, the what does the student do if the student has a question? Um, uh, can they, you know, raise their hand or send a chat to the teacher? And um, when that was tested, I didn't see it unless I was within that 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 same breakout. So that might be something that is just um, just kind of par for the course because it's brand new. Um, but that is so you may want to develop a strategy for students to be able to type in a question. It could be a shared document where students type questions that you're you're monitoring while they're in their breakout sessions, or it could be that you tell students to go into um, a breakout room. Oh, I just had an idea. Wait a minute. So what if we made a breakout room for questions? We could do that. So we could create a fourth room. Okay, let me do this. And I can take everybody and put them into a different room and I could either have them go back to the main space to be, that could be where they go to ask questions or this could be my question room and they can just dip in and out as they have questions. If you do that, then that's gonna depend on what your lesson is and whether or not that's going to make sense to you. These are all just suggestions. They're by no mean, means, um, you know, mandates or or tried and true practices because I just I just learned this basically to yesterday and the day before, and I'm still learning now. And you will too, and that's okay. Um, but if you wanted, this could be your questions room, and nobody's in there, but they um, you can try to. Actually, that's that's wrong. That's wrong. Just dis disregard that. They can't go into their own breakout room, so you don't want to do that. Um, but. You just want to have a strategy for them to be able to ask questions um, in real time. The other, the other um, question that came up is, um, you know, is this really just for student discussions in these small groups, or can it be for, um, you know, actually working on assignments? And absolutely, it could be. It could be both. It could be student. It could be um, for discussions for small group help. Um, it could be for, for centers, for, for students that are working, you know, in, in, in those um, types of spaces, learning environments within the classroom, depending on the age level and the subject. It could be for group work. Um, and it could also be for, um, you know, students to work on a, a document together. So um, if we have uh, students that are working on different topics within the same unit, they may be working in those breakout rooms together. So it's really flexible um, and it's really only intended to be a tool for to solve the issue of I'm meeting with students vir virtually um, and or also in person, but I have the need to meet with only a small portion of students at any given time. And I want the flexibility to be able to navigate back and forth between those groups. Okay, so that's, um, are there any, were there any other questions that were asked that I missed? I didn't write them down, so I apologize. 
Yes, Angela. Hey, um, today I tried Hi. this because uh, my group, I had students like working in groups anyway, and I wanted them to be able to talk together, but my groups were sort of pre-planned. So my question is, you know, today I rearranged them and it took me like five minutes to actually like drag everyone around. But when I open it on Monday, will they like go into the group that I had them in today? Or is there any way to preload where you want them to go to save time? So that, that question came up in the other, the other one, um, one of the other groups. And I, um, the answer is no, you can't preload them right now. But um, I just, to your second question, like, will it kind of give you the same people in the group once you select it the next time? I'm not exactly sure. Um, are, the, are there any consistencies between who's in group one now as opposed to who was in group one or two before? No, they're different. So I, I, they're, it's, it's going to be random. Um, and so what my suggestion would be, um, let me pull this, let me, let me click out of that. Let's go back in, go to breakout rooms again. And, um, what you could do is however they put you in the groups to begin with, probably the easiest thing to do is clear it right away. So you're not taking kids from group one to three and two and back and forth. So just hit clear and then you're going to have everybody alphabetically by first name. So that, you know, might help a little bit, um, you know, just knowing who those groups are going to be and then trying to, to pull them in. But it is going to take a little bit of time. Um, the other thing, the other option that you have, if you don't want to drag and drop, is you can actually um, type in the names and I can start putting individuals in there, um, you know, by either first initial, last name. So you, you can type them in as well if the drag and drop does tend to take a little bit longer, I feel. So those are some options that you Thank have. Thank you. I think typing would be really fast. I think that would be, when I type their name, would it just take them out of the big group? like the big meat and it move, it basically puts them in that specific one. So um, it's going to not, it's not going to put them anywhere yet. So like if you're still setting them up, it doesn't bring them into those rooms until you hit create. So right now everybody would still be with you as you go through typing the names. Why it's not showing me you. Oh, I changed my last name. That's why. Okay, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It's, it's blacker now. I knew that. I knew that. I'm sorry. Um, so, we, we, you know, you could start typing in their first or last name to try to make it a little bit, a little bit faster. Um, so I think for the first couple of times that, that you try this, um, if you're okay with them being random, use the randomizing tool to, to put them into those groups. But if you have a specific, um, you know, group it groups in mind rather than doing it on the fly just have that written down real quick and then it would make it easier for you to put them into into the groups uh just to, to maximize the, the the time um the other thing you know you can consider is all right i know my students are going to be working into in small groups in a few minutes but right now i'm going to give them a task it's going to be like their do now or something i could have that presented while I work on um, splitting them up into, into those small groups. So just kind of like keeping them busy while you're getting them where they, they need to go. Okay. Well, listen, I just, I just found something on some, something that said that you could break them up ahead of time, but before that gets sent out, everyone, I just emailed it to you. So if okay. it looks like something that does work, then maybe you could send it out to everyone. Absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, this is all like super, super new. So we're, um, if, if that, if, if that, if they can, if we can do that, I will send that out. I will post it in the Google Classroom so that you guys have access to that and you can start playing with those tools. Colin, you have a question? I, I do not. I hit that button by accident. So sorry. Oh, that's okay. All right. <laughs> Anyone else have a question about this before we move on to um, polls and Q&A and, and reports? 
Okay. If you think about questions, you just let me know because um, they may come to you as you start playing around with it a little bit more and I'll try to answer them as best as I can. Okay. We're going back to our activities here. So I'm clicking on the, the icon for the activities. Um, and instead of breakout rooms, I'm going to um, select polls for right now and then I'll do a Q&A. So polls are exactly that. We want to start a poll, find out what you guys think about a topic. So do you, are you, Okay, so I'm putting in here, you know, are you guys excited about breakout rooms? Um, now I saved that poll. I can, can I can make more polls now while my students are working on something. If I'm not sharing my screen, they wouldn't see that. And then I'm ready to launch them whenever I'm ready to go. Okay, I can choose to have students, everyone be able to see the results or not see the results. So I'm going to turn seeing the results on. Answer honestly, I'm not going to be upset either way. I'm going to launch this. You should get um, you should see the poll pop up in your, um, the sidebar underneath the, the, um, the icon for the activities. Okay, and then we just have that live poll. I can add another poll. Um, this is just something that you want to do, like you would do anything else to um, gauge the temperature of your of your class. So it would be, um, you know, as you're planning, if you wanted to have um, a Google Doc of the questions that you want to ask ahead of time and the polls that you want to ask ahead of time and just copy and paste, um, that might make it a little bit easier and faster for you because these are specific and unique to the, the classroom meet that you're in at that time. So, um, and I will, I will ask if there's a way to preload it just like preloading those groups. But to my knowledge right now, this has to be done um, while you're on the fly, while you're in the meet. Okay. So we have our, we have our poll here. That's pretty cool. Um, you guys are able to see the results, right? Okay, I can create another one or I can close that out. I'm going to close that out now. Okay, I'm going to come back here um, and I want you to tell me when I do this next one, um, did anybody notice, was there a, like a little green dot over this area to let you know? Okay, so that's that little notification that students should look for to know that you've submitted something to them that they there's an activity that they need to do. So now let's take a look at um, the Q&A section. So this allows individuals to ask questions and everyone can, can see them. So I'm going to turn this on right now and um, you can choose to allow questions or not allow questions. All right. So as I'm going, then you can see that, you know, it's open or not. Q&A is now open. So ask a question. So what I want you to do, um, any question, click on the ask a question button, add the question in, and um, then this way we'll all be able to see the questions that come in. So this is this is going to be um, helpful as you're going through a concept. You want students, you know, to be able to ask questions from home and you'll be able to get that again. I like that one. What is the meaning of life? Um, how is this different than chat? Great questions. Can you see who said what for the poll results? Yes, Joe, you can. We're going to take a look at that. Um, how is this different than chat feature? This is great. So now here's how it's a little bit different. Um, you can upvote this question because it's been, it's, it's a, it's a common vote. So now Susan and Laura had like the same question pretty much. So you can like the question and then we can then that can get pushed up to the top. So the, the, the things that are um, the most common can be pushed up to the top. As I go through, um, I might want to say, um, you know, this is this has been answered already. So um, I'm going to click on that. 
and I'll show you what this looks like because you're going to get a report of all of the questions that you've asked, who's interacted with them, and whether or not you answered those questions. So this is different because you're 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 they're asking a question. It can be voted upon. Like, yeah, that's a question for me too. I don't have to ask it myself. Maybe I'm a, a reluctant student and I don't feel comfortable asking it, but I can agree with someone who's a little bit more assertive in letting uh, letting me know that they don't understand the question. Can the Q and A be set to anonymous? Um, so let's see here. Um, we can we can change this to most popular, um, and that's how that's taking anything that has those um, the most popular options up to the top. And you can, as you see something, I don't know if it can be set to anonymous from the get go, but I can hide the comment if I want to, um, and then and then address that later. So uh, we I will double check to see if that's something. Can this be used while in a breakout room for the whole group viewable in a boat? Great question. I don't know the answer to that, but we can explore that if we have some time today. If not, I promise I'll do it in my next yeah. session and then get back to you guys. Um, can you have a question and a poll at the same time? So yeah, let's, let's do that. Here's another poll. Got a question, another poll. Um, Okay. So um, I have a poll out there too. Let's see if you guys can see that while you're also asking questions. I'm navigating back and forth between the Q&A. Make sure that I got everything here. Can this be the way the teacher asks questions? Of, can this be a way to ask questions of the teacher when in breakout rooms? We're going to, we're going to test that. Um, I'm going to show you the, the um, reports and then we'll come back and we'll test that real quick. Are all the results saved to a file? Yes, Gil. Great question. And I'm going to show you that too. Okay. This is a super cool uh, way for you to access all this stuff. And let's see if we can go back here and check out the poll. Uh, duh. Yeah, we are ready. Um, that's great. So yeah, I can see both of those things. I just have to toggle back and forth between the poll and the question. And so will the students as well. Okay. Now let's go to the, um, real fun stuff here. Your, um, your meet, uh, summaries and reports. So I'm going to go over to my email real quick and I'm going to choose my meet. Forgot to leave this open before, so let's find out where's the one that I did yesterday. Um, I'm gonna show. I'm gonna give show you an easier way to uh, to to find this too. So just give me give me a minute. Um, okay, let me let me show you a different way here. I don't want you to have to watch me struggle when it, there's an easier way to get at it. Okay, so um, within your drive, you're going. That's what it's called, meeting reports. Okay, you'll get an email as soon as the meet's done. But just like anything that we record in our our Google Meets it automatically created a file for us. Your classroom, it automatically creates a file for you. Your meeting reports, it automatically creates a file for you. Okay, this is the one that I was actually looking for and I would see that in my, in my, in my uh, inbox. But what I'd like to do right now is I'm just gonna right click on this or control click on this and I will rename this. Um, because this meeting, this was just something that I did on the fly. And that happens to be the Google Meet um, ID that I gave it because I hadn't given it a title. So I could always change that and do uh, 
type it, type exactly what it was. And that was the meat test that we did with the, um, the tech guys. Okay. And um, you'll notice that any of the Google meets that you have already had, um, if you made it in your calendar and you have that um, listed as the title, it's going to show up as the title as well. I didn't do that when I did the test. So that's not going to be there. Um, so you just want to keep keep it that in mind and you can always change those titles. So here's what you get when you, you get two things. So you, now I can't show you the meeting results of the polls and the quit and the, the questions and the attendance for this one because we're still in it. It's not going to send that to me till uh, a couple of minutes after I'm done with this meet and, and I stop it, I leave the meet, it's going to send me that email and then I'll be able to go back. All right. But what it does is it gives us the um, the the polling results and the question results. So let's just take a look at what that looks like. OK, this was like I said before, this was the. Um, the test that we did the other day, it's giving me the name of each student. Here's my polling results. Um, it's telling me the, the, how they answered and it's giving that in a spreadsheet. So every single um, poll that you question that you ask will be listed in that spreadsheet. Okay. Um, the other, this is, and it's also going to be, um, they're going to give you a tab for each individual question as well within the poll. So you can see here, you can see everything. And then here you can see just individual by question. If you wanted to break it down a little bit more, Google did the work for you, which I think is um, hopefully pretty helpful. I just want to copy this so I can go back in and find my email so I can show you the attendance reports. Let's take a look at the questions for this meet. Okay. Here is the, um, the question and see, this is what's going to be different from the questions that you ask in or the question or the chat feature within Google Meets. When you use the Q&A feature, it's going to give you this report, but, and that's, the, that's going to automatically be collected. The only way to collect those chats is to record your Meets, which we're not doing for instruction. However, once you, by, by the sheer fact that you've asked a question, it's going to give you this report that you can then um, have to, you know, track engagement and also to assess student awareness and understanding. Gives you each question, um, who submitted it, the time, if it was a popular question, maybe that's something that we need to revisit and go over again. And um, it's going to let me know whether or not I've, I've answered it, um, if I hit it. Um, if I cleared it or if the submitter deleted it or whoever had posted deleted it. So just some, um, you know, pretty cool features, I think. Let me pop over and see how you guys are doing with that before I show you the attendance. Everybody good? Okay. So let me come back into my mail here. Here we go. Okay. So this is how I receive the email for the date and, and receive the data that I just showed you. I clicked open and drive. Um, this is the folder that it automatically gives you. Here's my polling results, my Q&A results. The one thing that's going to be outside of the folder, though, are your is your attendance report. That's going to open up as a CSV. And what I like to do is once I click on that, I simply say open with Google Sheets. Okay, and then here is my attendance for the day. It's letting me know who was in, what their email address was that they logged in with, the duration that they were engaged, time they started it, time they exited it. Um, it's going to, it gives you a lot of really helpful data. What I suggest doing is I suggest keeping this one spreadsheet and adding to it as you go um, throughout the course of the marking period, month, whatever is, is easiest for you. So I'm going to suggest taking this here. I'm right clicking on it, choosing to rename it, and I just want the date. Okay, so this is just going to be 10-7. 
Okay. And that's it. I'm going to leave that like that. Now, let's say I have another and another sheet. Let's say I have another um, attendance report from the following day and I want to add it here. I could do that by going to add a sheet. Now, I know this is going to be today's date. So I'm going to do 10-8. Okay. It's blank right now. Coming back to let's just make believe that um, this is something that we've already downloaded. Okay, it could be downloaded or it could be, um, you know, it's it's going to, it could, you could add it to your Google Drive. Let's pretend this is another day, okay? I'm going to come into this sheet here for my attendance. I'm just going to call this attendance report and I'm going to give it, you know, let's say this is period one algebra, number two. Okay. Now, instead of having different spreadsheets for everything and having a lot of different files, I want one attendance report for the entire marking period, and I'm going to just add a tab for each day that I want to record. So how do I do that? I come up to File. I choose Import. I want to upload that, or I could drill down and find it within my, within my um, Google Drive folder going to take this, pull it in, drag it over so it uploads it, okay? And instead of creating a new spreadsheet, coming down to append to current sheet, basically it's just going to take that data and glue it right in to that first cell. So now I have a running record of the, um, the, the dates that students are in attendance for the class, um, just to make it a little bit easier for me, it's just a hint. You can choose to use it or not, um, but that is going to be available for you in your meets once you have five or more students within that meet, okay? So, for example, you have students that are home and they're learning virtually, but there's only four of them that logged in that day and your in-person students are not logged into the meet, you're not going to get an attendance report for that, okay? It would have to be five or more on the meet itself. Okay, we are right up at 159. Are there any questions that I can answer for you? Okay, think about it, play around with this. Um, these tools, again, are just, um, if they benefit you, that's wonderful. If they don't and you don't wanna use them, that's fine too. OK, this is just um, they're they're out there for you. And, um, you know, if you're finding that you're you have any questions about them or you need any any um, you have uh, you, you want it to do something you want to know if it does reach out, send in a ticket. Let us know. We'll do the research. We'll practice it. We'll let you know if you find something cool that we didn't know about. You can let us know too. let each other know. Um, Add it into the Google Classroom so that we can kind of share with one another. If you haven't joined the 21st Century Google Classroom, please do, because um, that's where we're going to be adding um, like helpful resources and stuff to this. I am so, so thankful that all of you um, came on such short notice to learn about this. I really appreciate you being here. I hope it was helpful, and I hope you have a great weekend. All right. Thank you all. Stay well. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Melissa. Thanks. Bye. Thank Bye. you so much. Thanks. Have a good weekend.